The following program is underwritten by the Nevada Irrigation District. Since 1921, providing clean and healthy drinking and irrigation water to more than 24,000 homes, farms, schools, and businesses in Nevada and Placer counties. Sitzer, this is NCTV Interviews, and today we have with us Brad Ballard, who is founder, originator, and CEO of Firefax, or uh, Fire Safety Learning Systems. So we're going to learn a whole lot today about what Brad has been doing uh, for our community and for the nation. It's, it's quite a story. So uh, to begin with, Brad, why don't you tell us a little bit about your past, what got you interested in this project? Okay. Uh, thank you for having me on. Um, I, I, have, uh, I have had kind of an interesting life in the sense that uh, my dad was a, a Navy pilot for many years, so he traveled quite a few different places. Settled up here back when I was in grade school. Uh, lived up here ever since. Uh, loved the area, loved the people. Um, but my career path took the path of a retail sales manager. I, uh, for 14 years, managed Don Adams satellites here locally. And uh, that all took an abrupt change a little over a year ago. Um, five, six years ago, um, this is the part where people start to think I'm crazy. Uh, had a dream in the middle of the night uh, to create an interactive fire safety DVD, CD for kids. Um, didn't really know anything about fire safety. Knew even less about interactive software. Um, schools couldn't do it at the time because their computers couldn't handle it. Software was too expensive. Kind of shelf the idea and then about a year, year and a half ago resurrected it. And here we sit now today with a national release in every 50 states and parts of Canada. So this originated really with a dream you had, yes. unrelated to anything you can uh, associate with in the past. And not only has it been um, a dream, but you've actually brought it into reality and rather dramatically. So tell us how, um, how you managed to bring it from dream to reality. Uh, a lot of assistance. Um, a year and a half ago, uh, spoke with a gentleman here locally and uh, told him kind of what it was that I wanted to do. I had done a lot of research and knew that there was nothing out there like this, uh, but in the same sense, uh, because it wasn't my field of expertise, I wanted to make sure it was something that would be as valuable as I thought it would be. And uh, when I spoke with him, uh, the, the, the ball just began to roll. Um, it was only just a couple weeks later I was meeting with all the chiefs of the uh, fire departments here locally. Um, they passed a uh, resolution, full support, full resources, anything they could do to help. Uh, weeks later, I was uh, meeting before the Department of Education, Office of Emergency Services, speaking with state fire marshals. Uh, and so the process from that point on just really began to snowball. Now, what's the difference between uh, fire safety in the schools for kids and the project that you have brought to the schools? Well, it's really interesting. For the last probably, um, well, I'm not going to say exactly how old I am. I'm not going to date myself. But things have not changed from when I was in school mm -hmm. as compared to now with fire safety. Right. It's coloring pages, word activities, a couple word scrambles, going out meeting a fireman, if you're lucky, getting to turn on the hose. Um, and, that, and that was fire safety day. Um, what this product does is it's interactive. It causes the kids to have to interact with the program. They have to answer questions. They get to take a test. If they take the test, they get to pass the junior fire marshal quiz. Um, there's an interactive scenario section where they, it actually shows smoke-filled hallways, uh, smoke-filled rooms. They have to make the right decisions to get out of the house in time. And if they make an incorrect decision, then they start over. So it really helps to reinforce what it's going to be like in the event of a fire. And then there's games, activities, and everything else to kind of reinforce what it is that they've just learned. And this is all on a, an interactive uh, CD. Yes that you have brought to the schools and talk a little bit about the entry of this you know how, how did you manage to get it into the schools and not just locally well the the first thing that i have to 
without a little bit of assistance money wise I wouldn't have been able to do anything and uh, several local people I never asked uh, several local people came up and said Brad uh, we want you to do this we believe in what you're doing um, and, and here's a check and it really gave me the ability to step away from my job uh, the confidence to, to quit a job that I've been doing for 14 years to try to do something I'd never done before um, and then with the, the chiefs coming alongside and saying here's the additional support you need um, those were the key pieces that made this possible uh, obviously the other key piece is the uh, firefighter that's actually on there firefighter bill uh, he's a local person he's, he's lived up here most of his life um, he's now a uh, firefighter down in Roseville County um, but he's the perfect person I couldn't have asked for a better person to be able to relate with kids and we'll be able to see some, yes. some of Bill here yes uh, firefighter Bill who's becoming a local and rather national celebrity due to you're providing the schools with these CDs free of charge. Yes. And this is for classrooms throughout the county? Yeah. Uh, what, what we did was we, we wanted to develop it into an age-appropriate disc that'll, that'll hit preschool, first grade, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. But this first one was really, we expected it to be a prototype, kind of just that initial release, see the response. But the response was so strong. And then we got calls from um, um, several different uh, national state agencies saying, oh, we want you to take this national. This is that good. We really need this. And then the first estimates came in, 35 to 38 child lives saved with a national release the first year is what their estimates were. And so it really put us in a position of, of how can we not do this? Right. And there's no way we could charge for it because so many of the schools can't afford um, educational materials as is. Fire safety is a one-day event, so to ask them to pay money towards something that's, that's only going to be a one-day part of their curriculum is difficult. And uh, so that's why we just determined we were going to do whatever it took. And financially, my wife and I, and uh, then with the help of uh, private donations, have, have put everything we've got into it to make sure that it was successful. And we'll have uh, information uh, listed for you on screen so that if you want to get a hold of Brad, if you want to help support the project, I'm sure you're more than willing to... Uh, you know, to talk and arrange, make arrangements. Yes, we've had people that have asked to donate uh, money and we keep telling them we don't want donations. If you want to give us money, then we want to give you discs. So you purchase discs from us so you can give those discs to more kids. So we'll get into more hands of more students. Mm -hmm. uh, instead of just giving us money this way, it, it, is, it has a double benefit. So. Well, let's take a look at some of the images that you brought with you today. Okay. Uh, because it, you know, picture's worth a thousand words. So um, be happy to actually show the public what you're talking about. Yeah, this is the opening screen that, uh, that uh, students see when they insert the disc. Um, it, it's basically auto run. As soon as they put the disc in, this screen comes up. Of course, what you're not seeing is it's a little bit more interactive. The, uh, the fire station doors roll up and the uh, lights on the engine are, are turning. And you'll notice it's designed for both English and Spanish versions. Once the student begins to progress through the CD, uh, this is their first time they get to meet Firefighter Bill, besides the cartoon image that's on the sleeve in the disc. And uh, he kind of explains to them what they're going to be doing. The fact that there's a learning section, there's going to be times when they actually get to experience what it's like inside a, a house that's filled with smoke, and also that there's games and stuff. Of course, we want to mention the games because that's what keeps the kids interested. They want to get through the rest so they can get to there. The following scene you'll see here is the uh, main menu. I wanted to make the menu kind of look like that classroom type situation. <laughs> and uh, so those, the, the writing that you can see on there, that's actually the different links that they can click on that'll take them to different sections of the disc. This is really excellently uh, organized uh, visually. And in a bit, we're going to see a video because to try to demonstrate really how interactive this is. This isn't just watching something. Right. The kids participate actively. And it's a, a visual simulation of many of the kinds of uh, situations that occur. Yes. And the fact that they have to interact by answering the questions as they progress through the learning system keeps them involved through that whole process. So, so what, uh, what do you think the, the production level is uh, for you at this point? How many CDs have you put together and what do you anticipate? Uh, our, our first efforts originally, like I said, were for California. Then when we had to switch to a national um, the, the, we had to have some creative thought in how to make that happen with the limited funding we had. 114,000 public private schools. Um, so we, we shot for the goal of 100,000 CDs. To get those out to the states, utilize the states, the local level PTAs, state level PTAs, get them involved, get the schools involved, get the state fire marshals involved, 
give them free reign, free license to make as many copies as they want. And uh, it's exciting to know that the estimates we're getting are between 2.5 and 4.3 million discs across the U.S. and Canada. We're talking millions yes. now, not thousands. Right. So the reception has been incredible. Yes. It's a product that is distributed free of charge. Yes. And it's invaluable because really you've moved into the tech age. You know, right. this is something that passes up coloring books and really right. engages children. So you want to look at the video now? Sure. Okay, so this is a video prepared um, as part of the um, learning project that uh, Brad has constructed. And we'll see it in just a minute. <laughs> Raptor structure fire this time. Right now, all the crew is getting ready for the fire. We, when we get there, everyone wants to step off fully ready to go. They'll have their, their SCBA on, their breathing apparatus. We'll get our mask on. We'll even get our helmet on. But most important, just like you and your car, we're going to go all the way with our seatbelt in place. This is just one of the sections that's on the uh, CD. Uh, we put this underneath the game section. There's actually an interactive 360 degree engine tour. So the kids can actually turn the engine all the way around. Uh, they can even climb in the cab. They can honk the horn. They can turn on the engine. They can open every cabinet, see what's inside. And this is uh, one of the things that they can do when they hop in the cab. Uh, uh, an emergency call suddenly comes through and it comes up and asks them if they want to go for a ride along. And of course, what kid is not going to want to ride inside of a uh, of a fire engine. I got to admit that I was like a little kid when I was able to shoot this. Uh, the guys kept laughing at me because I was smiling from ear to ear. Uh, it's an experience I'll never forget. But what's really nice is we've used this clip, and you'll see here, to lead into the local rallies that we're doing at schools here locally. And so we play that video clip, and then it goes right from that into the firemen coming in on their hands and knees, uh, acting like they are expecting to come into a fire. And within seconds, uh, the kids are involved, they're engaged, they're watching what's taking place. And uh, the excitement that this has generated has been, has been probably one of the most rewarding parts because we've now been able to go into fourth, fifth, and sixth grade classes, uh, which previously they weren't really doing a lot with because they thought they were too old. Now the kids are excited, they're involved, they're raising their hands, they're asking questions. Uh, so it's been a really enjoyable time. We actually just did uh, Pleasant Ridge today, had a great response with those younger kids. We talk a lot about the fact that uh, children need to recognize that firefighters are their friends. It's a sad statistic that a lot of kids will turn around and run back into a, a building that's uh, engaged with a fire because they'll see a fireman and, and the fright that that creates in them. And uh, so we actually have come in with the masks on, but then we take those masks off. They begin to see that it's just a nice guy underneath all that. We also try to bring in some firefighters that are women to let them know that that's something that uh, is also something that they can do, that it's not just a career for boys and girls. And uh, it's a great way of just being able to, uh, to tell the community what it is we're doing and uh, how we're doing it. Well, my wife and I actually donated 6,200 discs, so every student within the county gets to take a disc home, so they'll be able to use that. That's fantastic. I would imagine in the process you're enlisting future firefighters. That's what we're hoping. That's what we're hoping. <laughs> Yeah, it's, a, it's, uh, it's really inspirational to see what one person can do with help in, in a community such as ours. It's a great community yes. to, uh, to initiate ideas in and uh, get support, but you've gone from our community to the nation. Right. So congratulations. Thank you. It's really an accomplishment. And uh, I think that, uh, you know, having been a teacher myself, I know that uh, the fourth, fifth, and sixth graders are really tuned into something like this. Right. this. This gets them going. Right. And if they know that next year there's more games, they're looking for that disc next year, it becomes something that they're really interested in. And of course, we've got the website, which we hope will keep their interest throughout the year. So two things. One is you've got plans for uh, following. Now, yes. what, what's that vision? The ideal situation would be to be able to develop an age-specific. Maybe one disc, it might be three discs, depending on the amount of content. We'd like to shoot for the preschool, kindergarten, then move to a first, second, third, and then a fourth and fifth. Um, and that way we can really 
tailor the individual sections to that specific age group. The scenario, the interactive, uh, where they're actually in a, in a house with smoke, uh, I would really like to see that evolved more in depth for the older kids and keep it very simplified for the younger kids. Um, right now, this disc probably is over the head of most preschoolers, first grade, because of the mm -hmm. reading, the ability to mouse click, to, to recognize questions correctly. But the great thing about that is it's involved, the, the teachers are using it as a PowerPoint, doing it as classroom, then the parents are taking it home and the parents are actually kind of forced to work with their kids to help them with fire safety. Mm -hmm. and, and we recognize that if we don't get the parents involved, what their child learns is valuable, but they really need to, uh, the parents really need to step up and do the things that will help make their home as safe as possible. So we're hoping this disc will kind of accomplish that also. So what are the, some of the values uh, that you stress in the learning? Um, really, it's the basics of fire safety for the kids. And then the separate, the separate area that we're really focusing on is the importance of parents doing just 10 simple steps. That's on the website. 10 simple steps that will make their home fire safe. The fact that they need smoke alarms in every bedroom. Uh, every rally, every classroom we've been in, we ask the question, how many of you have smoke alarms, smoke detectors in your bedrooms? And when all the kids sit down and only those standing don't have them, there's always students that are still standing that say, I don't have one in my bedroom. Mm -hmm. and, and that would be obviously the, the ultimate goal is next year to come back and not a single student standing when they're asked who doesn't have a smoke detector in their room. 80% of the fires um, you know, that, that start um, um, are, are, are within homes. And, and then 65% of those fires where deaths occur are in homes where there's no smoke detectors. Mm -hmm. So if that isn't enough of a statistic to make parents recognize that just by spending just a little bit of money to be able to create that much security for your family, uh, that's what we're trying to do is make them recognize these are not difficult things. It's not too expensive. Smoke detectors are very inexpensive now. They're available anywhere. It takes seconds to install. Second thing is check those batteries. You've got to check them twice a year. You've got to make sure they're working. Mm -hmm. um, that statistic of 65% includes those homes that have smoke detectors, but the batteries weren't checked and they weren't working properly. Mm -hmm. So it's a frightening uh, statistic to recognize the position you're putting your family in if you don't have them. So that's the second thing. The, the next thing would be to practice what it is that we're, we're telling them. Um, if they want to be good at soccer, and we ask the kids these, how many of you play soccer? And the hands just go up. How many of you play basketball? What do you have to do to good, be good? Practice. Okay, so take that same thing and take that home and use that with fire safety. Get your parents to, to draw a plan so you know how to get out of every room. Have those two exits from every, from every room of the house. And, and follow that through with your parents. Make that safe meeting place outside where you know you're supposed to gather once you, uh, once you leave a structure where you're concerned there's a fire. Don't investigate when the alarm goes off. Know what that alarm sounds like. All the things that we know to be simple, but if we don't practice them with our children, they don't know them. Um, it's a sad statistic that most children go to the sound of a smoke detector rather than away because they don't know what that sound is. Mm. So those are things that are easy to overcome with just doing those 10 simple steps. That's fantastic. So this is, um, it sounds like you've become a, a, a promoter for uh, the fire departments all over uh, the country. I hope. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I hope. And you've gotten a lot of support from them. So um, what, um, what do you have next on the agenda for yourself? You're going to the local schools. Yes. And that you did one today. Yep. What does your day and week look like? Well, we're trying to do as many schools within the county as possible. If, uh, if a principal wants us to do a rally, we'll be there. And we come in, uh, it's not a firefacts.org rally. We come in with the local fire department and that we're there to support them. And so the local fire department comes in and they do their presentation and we have the disc to be able to hand out Firefighter Bill comes alongside, and when he shows up, he's one of the local fire departments. He's not from Roseville County, he's from the local department, and he's there to stress the emphasis of, of the things that they need to do and the things they need to tell their moms and dads when they get home. And then to let them know, you know, that they're, this is some of the pictures from some of the rallies we did. This was actually Union Hill. And uh, the kids, as you can see, uh, with the engagement of the firefighters, I mean, they're just, they're just glued, they're fixated. <laughs> And uh, I was at a soccer practice just a couple days ago, and uh, it was amazing the amount of moms. I forgot I had my shirt on, and all these moms coming up going, my kid brought one of your CDs home, and I just wanted to thank you. And so we know that they're getting home. We know that the kids are excited about them, and obviously it, that excitement we hope will you know, kind of lean over and help those parents to say, okay, let me sit down on this computer, take just those 10 minutes, and see what it is that you learned today about fire safety. It's a sad statistic. We spend in our schools... 45 minutes once a year on fire safety is the average. 45, the average. 45 minutes, minutes a year. once a year. 
States like New York do require more, but the average is 45 minutes, which mean in most states the average is under 30 minutes once a year in our classrooms to teach fire safety. And yet the Academy of Pediatrics said that fire and deaths related from fire is the second leading cause of deaths for children from one to nine years of age. Well, second that's, leading that's cause. That's what I was going to ask you, if you had any uh, statistics on uh, deaths or injuries related to fire. Yeah, and that being the second leading cause, it's second only to vehicle injuries. And yet we only spend 45 minutes on average in schools to teach the importance of fire safety. Approximately 80% of all fire deaths are residential fires. I had stated that early. It's the fifth leading cause of unintentional injury deaths within the United States. So those are including injuries that happen outside the home as well as inside. And it's the third leading cause of fatal home injuries. And that covers all age groups. So it's second for children ages one through nine. The highest rate, the highest risk factor is for children under five and senior citizens. Uh, because of the fact it's more difficult to get out. Right. Um, last year, 2007, here's the statistics. 412,000 home fires resulting in 28, just over 2,800 deaths and 13,000 injuries. And the sad statistic mm. is, is that has not changed from 1998. So 10 years ago, the statistics were 369,000 fires. So the rate has actually increased. And the death rate is actually equal to that of 1999. So for 10 years, mm -hmm. nothing has changed as far as things getting better. But we're hoping that the CD. Well, it's, it will sounds be one of those like things. you've got great timing because uh, obviously what we should be able to do is educate ourselves better. Right. We all know that, uh, particularly with children, there's a certain amount of repetition yes. needed. Yes. In fact, for all of us, and 45 yes. minutes a year, right. for any of us, is not it's adequate. Not enough. Right. Know. Right. And it's really, you know, it's, it's kind of a, uh, uh, an overlooked area of child education for a, for a long time. Then you compound onto that, California cut our budgets. Uh, I recognize that they had to, but that means a lot of fire departments were not paying firefighters to go into local schools. Schools could not pay for the time that it took. So all of a sudden, this is coming out during a year where many schools had nothing to replace mm -hmm. that 45 minutes, even though limited it was, at least it was better than nothing. And so we're hoping uh, that, uh, you know, one of the gentlemen in Wyoming for the Department of Education made the statement, he says, you're going to revolutionize parts of education you haven't even thought of. Mm -hmm. and, and wouldn't that be a wonderful statement to see people begin to step up and say, hey, I can do something like that in a different area. Internet predators, personal safety, uh, what happens if there's an emergency at a school, uh, being bullied at school. We think about all these areas where something like this could be a powerful tool mm -hmm. to help teach students. Uh, you know, how to deal with these things. I'm just thinking about technology and wondering if there's any way to put something like this online so that yes. I, I don't know about interactivity online, but um, well, there are parts of this yes. probably. We're actually working with that. Um, um, a gentleman within Adobe's corporation with his help and, uh, and their support, uh, we're working on developing uh, um, additional ways of being able to get this to where it would work as an interactive application from the web. Uh, maybe a downloadable desktop application type program. Um, so those are all things that are exciting applications that could be happening in the future. The nice thing about the CD, though, that the, you can't replace with an interactive uh, content on the web is that child takes that home, mm -hmm. and they can't wait to pop it into that computer. And mom and dad go, what is it that has my child so excited? And all of a sudden now, like never before, you have parents interested in what their child has just learned about fire safety. So we're hoping that's going to translate into more homes having more smoke detectors doing the things that they need to do. It's like really what's happening now in the uh, simulated voting uh, happening at uh, campuses, particularly high school campuses, where the kids come home excited yes. about voting and ask their parents if they voted and maybe yes. they haven't. And this is an incentive for parents to get involved. Right. And at least with this, we're not going to have 50% of them voting one way and 50% voting the other. Everybody's going to be excited about this, at least we hope. Here, here's a photo of what uh, the CD actually looks like. And Brad has done a fantastic job of really making it as inviting as a children's book uh, and uh, just as perhaps even more so interactive. We've tried. Yeah, we've done our best. And, and for the time that we put into it, for a year's time, I, I'm, I'm probably my hardest critic, but I'm pretty pr proud of, of what we've been able to accomplish in that short of time. So um, what, would, uh, what would you suggest in terms of parents uh, getting involved with uh, having their schools uh, promote this, uh, getting involved with you? Uh, are you looking for any particular kinds of support? You know, in a project like this, um, the importance of 
which took place to take 100,000 discs and create 200, I mean, two and a half million discs was a grassroots movement. It was people saying, I want to get involved in what's happening here. It's important to me. Um, so we're always looking for that. Um, we really leaned heavy on educators. We have a forum on our website just specifically for teachers. We just launched it. There hasn't been any communication on that yet. That's active now, though. We want teachers to go there to tell us, hey, these are the things we did in our classroom that were great. Really help the kids recognize uh, the, the blanket and having kids crawl underneath it, whatever it is that they've done in the past. Mm -hmm. We've got a place for parents to be able to go to communicate, to ask questions. Um, but we want to see this continue to happen. We want to see it free next year. We want to be able to do the things that, you know. So let's, let's bring up the website again because from what Brad has said, it's, uh, he's put a lot of time into it. It's uh, very interactive, very educational, and this is a kind of uh, future that we are looking at uh, as we move more and more into how to solve issues both local and uh, regional, yes. national, international. So it's really uh, a look at the future. Yes. And uh, a tremendous um, uh, really uh, recognition for the work that you have done uh, in this project to sort of bring us forward, not just in fire, as you've said, it has so many applications so that um, I'm, I'm looking forward to trying it out myself. Unfortunately, my kids, my kids are grown, uh, but I'm going to take the CD home and, uh, and, and give it a whirl. And I'm sure that there is something that can be learned by each and every one of yes. us. Yes, without a doubt. And, and the fact is, is even if you don't have children, fire safety is still just uh, as important uh, because every home is equally susceptible if the right things are not done. You know, the average right now is, is one out of every 386 homes will experience a fire each year. Um, that's less than the average um, population of most elementary schools, which means every student, even if they're not directly affected, knows of a fellow student that was affected by a fire. And it's that type of, of uh, fright, the unknown, not knowing if it could happen, um, that, that really when you see children talk about fire, you see this fear that's there because they've never really had. Then you see them yeah. after they've seen the CD, and the transformation is amazing. So yeah, we're 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 uh, excited about what it can do. Well, I want to thank Brad, and I want to thank uh, our crew: uh, uh, Gail Woodman, Marilyn Blom, Michael Lamarca, Bill Carquest, our engineer, and. Um, really want to encourage you. This is another aspect of local technology here at NCTV. So please continue to watch. Please continue to support uh, our um, endeavor here. At, and remember that we have a, a telethon coming up very soon uh, on Saturday, November 1st. And uh, we hope that you will be involved in that as well. Thanks a lot and continue to watch NCTV. Thank you.